Lily, thank you so much for joining us today and being willing to talk a little bit about your beginnings as an activist, and which is my first question for you. So what events or beliefs led you to become an activist? I think it happened gradually. Being an activist is just to truly, fully, and honestly living one's life. Uh, two incidents came to mind. One is that I remember uh, reading Gandhi's autobiography. His first act for uh, fighting against the injustice began uh, by himself. Uh, he was a young lawyer riding a train in South Africa. He bought the first class ticket and he was sitting there comfortably. And then the train agent came and saw a colored man sitting in the first class cabinet. That was not allowed. And so he asked Gandhi to get down the train. Gandhi said, no, but I bought the ticket. And then the train agent became so angry that he threw him off the train track. Gandhi got himself up and he said, this is injustice. I'm going to stand my ground. And that's when he started to fighting the injustice in South Africa, you know, the apartheid system. He was just simply saying that this is not right. I want to live in dignity and I'm going to fight it. It's a very personal act. And I really believe that it began with the personal and the personal can become the universal. I mean, I didn't have the ambition to do um, anything grand. I just simply have a place to paint. <laughs> and then I was happy. I was a studio painter, but I think life arranged in such a way that I was invited to North Philadelphia and to build a park on an abandoned lot. I really had no intention or no understanding or no ability to do anything like that. But I began with a crack in my being. It's not on strength, but on deficit. I was doing very well uh, externally. I was teaching at the uh, University of the Arts and I was showing in Marion Locks Gallery, the best in town, and uh, raising f uh, my son, having family. But I felt something essential is missing in my life. And so there is a crack in my heart. Life arranged that I was invited to this inner city lot by the late dancer choreographer, Arthur Hall. And uh, I was frightened. I got very little grant from Pennsylvania Council on the Arts. And as I'm about to do it, and uh, I asked expert, how do you do such a project? And people say, no, you cannot do it. And children going to Detroit, everything you build, and you're from outside, you won't be accepted by the community. And you had no skill. A voice in me spoke and said that if you don't rise to the occasion, the best of you will die. I think that was what actually guided me and then gave me the opportunity to step into a challenging situation. I started from a humble position. Anybody who can help, could help me, I invited them to come in to help me. And nobody would. But it was one adult, Joseph Williams, living in a semi-abandoned house next to the abandoned lot. I convinced him, and he wasn't employed, and he liked the idea of building a park on this abandoned lot. And a group of children, from all deficits, we started. It is the deficits that made the project successful. We had the opportunity to root in the community. We came together and we found the hidden resources by recycling the bricks and stones being buried when city tore down houses. Then we recycled them. We converted maybe 120 lots and created 17 parks and gardens, a tree farm, vegetable garden. We launched a, 
education program, collaborating with neighborhood schools and youth theater and community-based health and house building uh, renovation and crafts entrepreneurial and 10-year-long community-based theater. I call it a tree of life project. An artist and bunch of unskilled people cross-border, cross-class, uh, cross-gender and equal. Everybody's voice has been listened to and everybody's contribution being uh, welcomed, multi-leveled and deeply rooted in the community, that is a, a model called the Tree of Life. It became a full-fledged community building and healing organization. I left after 18 years, and I established another organization called the Barefoot Artists in order to pursue international project to bring beauty to broken places in the world. I want to define art. Usually we think of art as a, a visual, a verbal, poetry theater, performance, music. But I define art as creative action. It's creativity in thinking, methodology, and implementation. When we were in Africa, we built toilets for them. We restored their houses. We put roofs on. They have no water. We installed rainwater collecting devices for families. So that's our uh, creative action, part of our artistic language in building community. What continues to motivate you or give you courage or guide you? First summer. I went in. It was so challenging and chaotic and was like in the battlefield. Every day, a horde of children would come. They're so excited. And of course, Jojo, who was a member, expelled to the fringe of society. And here was a came uh, an artist from outside, asked for his help. I didn't put him down. I said, please help me. That totally changed his standing. And children adored him because he always have uh, all kinds of tools hanging around his belt. He is a symbol of strength and, and, and courage to the children. Our project became the big playground for children. Every day, the, the intensity and the depth of the work and the space for creativity. We managed to turn the arid, the indifferent, the frigid, the space of despair into something nurturing. And I remember asking Jojo, I said, why didn't adults come and help us? And he said, they're laughing their teeth of your project because they say it's a woman and a whole bunch of children did not know what they were doing. We didn't. In our head, but in our heart, we tapped into the vitality and energy of life. This humble project in a broken place led me to the entry of my life's calling. So that is what turned me an activist. I am the one who received the most. What advice do you have for youth now, for young activists? Pay attention to what moves you. When we were moved by somebody's action, somebody's speech, by a piece of music, by poetry, by an act of kindness, whatever it is, because life is speaking to you. Pay attention to what we really like because the young people are under so much pressure in every way, you know, peer pressure, parental pressure to accomplish, but give oneself a moment to just be still to observe and listen to the present moment. 
be compassionate and kind to oneself, accept the strength, especially the weaknesses. That is the crack. Leonard Cohen said, the light comes through the crack. Try to create opportunity to be in situation that will bring us that sense of fulfillment and joy that will nurture us and give us strength to walk the path we are born to fulfill. Everyone is unique in this whole universe. And that's what we're born for, to fulfill. Thank you so much, Lily.